Hi guys. Dukey8668 asked if I could make a magnet powered car. Now he'd been looking at my gravity powered cars and he wondered if I could do one that was magnet powered. And initially I thought no, because there are quite a few spoof videos on YouTube of people apparently using magnets to power cars. But thinking along the lines of gravity powered, I thought maybe I can do something. It won't go very far because the distance a magnet um, works over is quite short. About, what's that? About two inches, if, if that. Yeah, I reckon about, or at least these neodymium magnets that I've got here, I've got two on there, and a piece of wood so that I don't smash them together, and then three more here. They're different ones, but they're still neodymium. And I say, looking at that, two inches maybe, yeah, one and a half to two inches. So all I've done is I've attached a piece of string, or um, this is actually kite um, nylon cotton or whatever. This is a car I've used before, so there's no change to it. It's just an ordinary rubber band powered car. Still got a little um, cable tie on it to hook the normally the rubber band onto. So I've got a loop on the end of my bit of cotton here. I'll probably have to move the camera to be able to do this. I need to <laughs> separate the magnets, hook that over there. I'll probably try and do some close-ups in a minute, but you'll see that's now suspended there. That's the magnet. suspended and then I'm going to wind the axle back to about two inches away. Now at that point if I let it go there's not enough power for it to pull forwards. If I ease it forwards gently It'll come to a point, there we go, it pulled itself forwards. So I'm going to do the same thing on the floor. I'll set it up and then gently move it forwards until it gets to that tipping point and then it will move on on its own. that on. I'll move the camera in a minute so we can get a close-up view. But I'll gently move it forwards until it gets to that tipping point and it pulls itself. So you can see I'm not pushing the car to make it go. So it works. <laughs> I'll see if I can do that with the camera in my hand so we can get a close-up. I'll just try doing this with the camera on the tripod on zoom. So, 
the magnets. It's the loop on the string. Over there. Bend it up a bit. And what we need to do is get the position just right. So it's going to be pulled on its own. Probably a little bit of unevenness on the floor. Try and do it handheld this time. So I've already put the cotton over the hook at the axle end. So we need to slowly release it. Until it's at that tipping point. There we go. I didn't expect it to work at all, but we're getting about about three meters. So in summary, we've got a couple of neodymium magnets here. I've got a piece of wood sticking into the chassis so that when the magnets do crash together, they don't smash into each other and break. Then we've got some more neodymium magnets here on a thin piece of nylon attached to the back axle. And all that happens is the magnets are trying to come together and we, when we get to a particular point they're close enough for the strength of that attraction to be enough to turn the axle. And when it turns the axle, obviously it moves the car forwards. But that distance that needs to be is quite close. It's only about an inch. Before it actually gets going on its own. That's it. Well, you can see by the way that's rolled back then that my floor must be slightly sloping up at this point, which is why it was struggling to go. This is my freshly laid floor in my conservatory, which is supposed to be absolutely level, but <laughs> obviously it's not, otherwise that wouldn't have rolled back. Having said that, it could even be the wheels are not perfectly aligned, so that would have some effect as well. Anyway, enough of the finer points. The main thing is, it does work. It is a magnet-powered car, but it's very limited. We've got about one inch of movement there, which translated to the number of turns around the wheel is probably only... Well, I'd be surprised if it was two rotations. But it's enough to get the car some momentum, and then it just carries on on its own.
just freewheeling, which is why we've got about three metres. Job done. Just to make the point about the unevenness of my conservatory floor, this is my kitchen worktop, which as you can see is nice and shiny, and it should be absolutely uh, horizontal. So now we've got that's a nearly two inch gap there, at least four centimetres I would think. And I'm holding it to stop it rolling. So there we go. On the right surface, something nice and shiny and smooth, we can get quite a run out of it. But unfortunately, my conservatory floor isn't that smooth. It might look quite smooth, but it's not as smooth as my kitchen worktop. Just to confirm that the kitchen worktop is level, we're going back the opposite direction. So there we go.